fully aware of the video, uh, the, the microphone is really bad quality. Uh, it, it's the same microphone I usually use, it's just been deteriorating in, in quality recently. Um, and so it doesn't sound very good anymore. And I do mention that in my next heavily scripted video. Um, but I wasn't expecting to make this one before the next heavily scripted video comes out. Let's get into the actual video. Um, so let's kind of just cut to the chase. Uh, Lupin Ranger vs. Pato Ranger, the new Super Sentai series for next year, 2018, has been revealed. Um, let's go through the basic details first. Uh, fairly certain it's going to be released in uh, February 2018, although last time I said Kai Rider build was going to start in October 2017, and I was wrong. It, it was moved to air a month early. So what do I know, hey? As with every Sentai that I've seen, especially the recent ones, each new series kind of changes up things a little bit, like changes up the formula or adds something new in. There's two teams of three people each, and that's what I'm immediately going to get into. When it was first revealed that there was going to be two teams, uh, I was like, please God, have them be small teams rather than two teams of five people. Because I like it when characters get a lot of development each. I like it when a series is very, very character focused. And having less characters lets that happen. Uh, you can have a lot more drawn out character arcs, which I like. And you can have more of a focus on the individual uh, character interactions and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's only three people on each team, because that means we're starting off with six rangers. Because we usually start off with five rangers, that's like the default. We usually start off with five or three, but this time we're starting with two teams of three. Which is just one more ranger than we usually start off with. So that's still quite a lot. But it's not as much as it could have been, and there still could definitely be... Uh, enough time to kind of like really really focus and make this a character focused series which is what I want I always want that from these kinds of series is you're gonna have like the backbone of a character development in there with these kinds of series as I usually care more about the actual character development of the Rangers themselves than I do the plot but not only are there two teams but they're two teams that are gonna be fighting each other uh, well it basically the theme of the series is cops and robbers because one of the one of the teams is based on police uh, and police officers and stuff, and the other is based on uh, criminals and robbers and stuff. Because I think the villain team's gonna be the is gonna be the focus of the series. There's gonna be like one straight up protagonist in the series. It's probably gonna be Lupin Red, which is why I drew him for the thumbnail for this. We've had police series before. But we haven't really had anything like this. Uh, closest I can think of recent memory is Go Kaiju, where the Sentai were pirates, and not everyone looked up to them because they were kind of morally grey and just like, fuck you, we're pirates. And I really like it when kid shows go for something like that, where it's like, oh no, it's not just lawful good that gets to be a ranger, you know? It's like, other people on the Dungeons and Dragons spectrum get their role as a ranger too. And that's cool. And there's a lot you can do with having the Lupin Rangers as the main characters too. And that's my main hope for this series. If there's any main hope I have for the series, I hope it makes it so that the Lupin Rangers and the Pato Rangers both have believable motivations. Um, and I really hope that's just the main kind of emotional core and theme of the series. Having characters where it's kind of believable why they'd all be on different sides. It's fairly obvious why the Pato Rangers would be police officers and why they'd be hunting down the Lupin Rangers, but I want to know why the Lupin Rangers are doing what they're doing too. Uh, this is like my complete like theorizing because I don't think we've had any actual plotline details leak or surface yet. It's literally just been these four catalog image scans so far. But I would assume the plot or something along the lines of the plot, would be the one of the Lupin Rangers, probably Lupin Red, because I assume he's going to be the main protagonist of the, in the entire series. I think he probably used to be a Pato Ranger, but then something happened that made him want to switch sides or form the Lupin Rangers. 
and so the main kind of series is going to be like one of the Lupin, one of the Panther Rangers is like, oh, Lupin Red, you used to be like my best friend or whatever, but then you switch sides. Sure, that's just me guessing and just like kind of looking at the, the main premise of two teams against each other and just kind of going to the most like predictable place. But if I had to guess, if I, if I was a betting man, if I had to put money on, uh, what the plot was, that would be it. So let's get to the designs, uh, the designs of the two teams, and this is really cool because there's a lot of designs to judge because there's two teams, and the two teams have pretty different designs. So the Pato Rangers have two kind of distinct colors making up their suits. They have the color of the Ranger, so the red, the pink, and the green, but then they also have the white. But with the Lupin Rangers, those ranges are in the color and everything, but all their detailing is done in black instead, which is great. I kind of hope this isn't just... I mean, I know it will be, but I kind of hope this isn't just like a Monster of the Week thing. Like, it will be, because that's like one of the most important things of the Sentai series. But like, Sentai's really been mixing it up recently, and I think that if they wanted to make like just one series where they didn't do that at Wu, where they just didn't have those monsters, this would be the series to do it. I would really like to see this just be a series where it's these two teams fighting each other with maybe like another third party in there somewhere who's probably going to be the uh, the sixth ranger by the way. Uh, if I had to bet the sixth ranger is probably going to be a ranger that keeps switching sides between the two teams and his design's probably going to be like a grey ranger or a silver one or he's going to have both the black and the white detailing. Like, everyone always goes on about how good the Lupin Rangers look, and the Lupin Rangers look great, and I'll get to those in a sec, but I think the Pato Rangers look great too. I mentioned in my Power Rangers Ninja Steel video that I absolutely love the helmet designs with the giant oversized, like, cartoony-ass uh, visors, and that's what they're doing here. They've got the really giant visors on both teams, and they look great. So the, the helmet for the Pato Rangers, uh, I, I've been told and I assume and I just by looking at it, I'm going to say they're supposed to look like police helmets. And they've even got like a police badge on the helmet. And then you've got like the big, big shoulder pads. And you've got like the relatively, like what one thing I really like about both of these is they're relatively simple. Other than like the lines, which is a good thing because I quite like those suits. Uh, where they're really overusing the white, but I like the way they use the white. If you had to, if I had to pick out one of my favorite things from the Pato Ranger designs, I would say it's probably the 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 white gloves and the white cuffs. But because that's not anything too special, like every every suit has those cuffs. Every like almost every suit has the white gloves and cuffs combination. But the lining on the cuffs, both parts of the lining on the cuffs, are the colour of the ranger themselves. And we usually have like the lining for the cuffs be the colour of the rangers as well, but it's both of the lining on the cuff instead. It's So the top and the bottom of the cuff is lined with the colour of the ranger, which is something a little bit different, and I really, really like it. I think that works really well. It looks really nice and pleasing. And again, the weird-ass helmet as well as the shoulder pads, kind of give them enough to stand out without being overly detailed. I really like this is kind of like a really kind of simplistic, back to basics design. Over to Lupin's design. Uh, it looks like one of the themes of the series is going to be hats. If I hadn't thought about the hats before, I'm definitely thinking about them now, the Lupin Ranger designs, because Jesus Christ, they are just like time force helmets but with like giant top hats on them uh, sure cool again i really like the suits to take risks and look weird and different and just slapping a giant top hat visor that's like bigger than the helmet itself is great i love it uh first thought when i saw this image like the very first thing i thought of when I saw the image of the rangers was how are they gonna see out of that? Like with Time Force it was like I could see how they could see out of that. 
I mean, not really, but I could kind of see. But with this suit, it's like, no, there's no way anyone's seeing out of that helmet. There is no way. I'm usually not a hater of, like, when Sentai costumes have the lips on them. But I will admit, I love that these suits don't have the lips. I think these suits would look a bit weird if they had the lips. So I'm glad that they just kind of took a, a pass on it this time. Instead, it's just a silver plate when the mouth's supposed to be. And now onto my favorite thing about these suits, the cape. I love the capes. Everyone's being like, Super Santo doesn't need capes. The capes are cool. And the capes are back. And they look fantastic. I love them so much. I love the capes. And I love even more that the capes are actually relatively short. They only go down like a little bit further than the waist. Like they only go down like a few centimeters further than the belt, but I like that because it really bothers me when like superheroes and stuff have really long capes because it's like how come you don't just trip over it all the time. Anyway, uh, before we get to the Zords, we'll get to the transformation device. There's not much to say about the transformation device because we haven't seen much of it yet come out, but I guarantee you the second I release this video it's going to be outdated instantly and I'm going to get billions of comments like, you didn't mention this other piece of information. If I didn't mention it, it's probably because I, when I recorded this, it wasn't out. Which is the problem with these kinds of videos. But that's also why it isn't scripted. Because in the time it would take me to write a script, a new piece of information would come out. So the, the transformation device, it looks like the blaster. It looks like it's the blaster they both use. They both use the same blaster. And you can kind of see at the bottom here, there's like a sort of diagram about the blaster. <laughs> And it looks like the gimmick, or the collectible of the series, is going to be the Zords, uh, just like Tokuja, where you kind of like slide the Zord into the Morpher. And so, the way this Morpher works, it looks like that the Lupin Rangers slide their Zords onto the top of the gun, and the Pato Rangers slide their Zords onto the bottom of the gun. And that's really interesting, because when I saw that, the very, very, very first thing I thought was, what happens if you slide them both in at the same time? I like the transformation device, honestly. I can imagine not li not many people liking it, but it is just a generic blaster. It's just a generic white blaster with its most noticeable detail being the giant handle on the back. Don't know what the giant handle does, I assume it has some kind of connection to it being a melee weapon. No, before we get to the Zords and the Megazord, we'll get to another piece of device. A piece of device. Yes, I'm going to go for that. A piece of device. Um, there's two. Well, it's one, but it has two forms. And I had to write this stuff down, so I did research for this video. So, this is called the Good Striker. This was something where when I first looked at it, I didn't quite know what it was. I, I, at, first I thought, at first, I thought this was the Morpher. But it's not. The blaster, I think, is the more. I think, is the morpher. And this is a Zord summoner weapon. Which is interesting, because I don't think we've really had an item just exclusively for summoning Zords in a, at least the last, like, four or five years or so, at least. Usually they just summon the Zords with the morpher. It does other stuff too, but it has two different forms. It has the Pato Ranger one, which is the, the trigger machine. And it has the Lupin Ranger one, the, the Dial Fighter mode. What this thing can also do is it can also attach to the Morpher to activate like their final like finishing move. Which for the Lupin Rangers, I don't know what it is for the Pato Rangers. It prob that information probably exists, but I haven't found it. Um, but what it is for the Lupin Rangers is it is called the Itadaki Strike. Which is just which roughly translates to to the stealing strike, and I've heard that it's uh, that it becomes the ver that the that the name of the weapon of the is the two items combined is called the versus bazooka and the and the henshin device I forgot to mention geez I am a mess <laughs> but the ver uh, but the, the the transformation device is the versus changer. Which I really like. I was like, what are they going to call it? Because usually they have the name of the team in the transformation device. But instead, this time, it's just the Versus Changer, which I think works. I think that's a good way of doing it. And that doesn't rule out the fact there's a third team. Come on, guys. There's probably a third team or something that comes in later on. 
so yeah, now we can get to the Zords and the Megazord, and then we can f end this video, because geez, I've been recording for a very, very long time, and I need to get this video out soon. Well, first of all, my favorite thing about the Megaz uh, the Zords is the little hats. The Lupin Ranger ones especially just have, like, they're just jets with top hats on, and that's great. And if there's one thing the Megazords and Zords for this remind me of, that's the, the Generation 1 Transformers. That's why I would say these remind me most of. Not other Power Ranger Zords, or not other Super Sentai Zords, but Generation 1 Transformers, because they kind of have that, like, 80s design to them. And I've heard people say that the actual suits themselves look kind of like 80s designs too, which I agree with. I know this is what I'm guessing. Again, it took me a little while to figure out how this worked. It looked a lot of me looking at the images to kind of figure out how this works. So what I believe it is, is this isn't just a case of you get the big red ranger zord and then the other two zords attached to it. This is a bit more complicated than that. The good striker that I just mentioned that they use to summon the zords is a zord in and of itself, is what I'm led to believe. And the, that thing forms the base of both Zords, which is why they both have very similar looking legs and like a very similar looking torso, because it's the same thing, it's the same toy, and then the other three Zords like attach to it to create two different modes. And that's an interesting way of going around it actually, and that's really, because like for the past few years the Zords have been very kind of similar, and even something as simple as this kind of changes it around a little bit and I quite like that I also quite like the Lupin Ranger one they just have like the good striker and then it looks like the Lupin Red just parked his jet on it and it isn't actually serving any kind of useful function it's just kind of there and I love that I just kind of love how dumb and silly that is I don't currently know that no, I do. I do know their name. It's the Pato Ka it's the Pato Kaiser and the Lupon Kaiser, which is a really interesting name for these two. Lupon Kaiser has a giant ass top hat, which I love, and both arms also have giant top hats. And then the Pato Kaiser has like this really big, uh, like police helmet looking thing at the top of it too. And again, uh, just like with the Zords, this looks totally like a G1 Transformer. If anything, it's Lupin Kaiser that's really selling the Transformer angle for me. Lupin, uh, the Lupin Kaiser having uh, the Red Ranger's jet just kind of placed on the torso like that makes them look like Starscream. I, I really like that design. That fits really well, actually. Um, it, I like how kind of sleek the legs are. I like it when the Megazords are very kind of like, sl I mean, I know a lot of people really like their chunky and blocky uh, Megazords, but I actually prefer the sleek looking ones, and these ones are relatively sleek looking, especially in the legs. So I like that too. Uh, my biggest problem with these mechas is the arms, because the arms don't look like they have that much articulation or anything to them. They literally just look like the 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 other zords just kind of placed onto the side of the good striker and i just said that one of my favorite things about the zords is that the lupon ranger's one is just kind of planted on the chest so why am i complaining about the other ones also being kind of planted on there and that's because the other ones serve a purpose the other ones are supposed to be the arms and they don't look, and some of them especially the pato ones don't look, like, don't look like they're doing a great job of being the arms. Which is kind of a shame. Maybe they maybe they serve a better purpose in future combination Zords and stuff. I really like its design. But I'm not certain if I'm going to like its utility. I don't know if it's going to be that great an actual toy. But I'm an adult. Which means I don't really care about the toy itself. I just care how cool it looks on my shelf. And this looks like it would be pretty damn cool on someone's shelf. So I guess that's me sort of, eh? Too bad I don't have enough money to buy all these Japanese tat. So that's Lupin Ranger. That, that's Lupin Ranger. Uh, that's all the information we have so far. It literally is just four catalog images. And two of them are of the good striker. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to this series. This looks great. 
Um, this is the kind of mix-up I needed, honestly, because Sentai was getting a little bit stale for me recently. But this was this is something I'm interested in. I'm interested in two teams fighting. I'm way more interested in two teams fighting than I will ever be one team versus like a costumed like monster of the week thing. So I'm really looking forward to this. This looks really cool. The general opinion seems to be very, very positive, although with new Sentai's that always seems to be the case. I am definitely on the this is really cool fence. I, I'm really excited for this. This looks like a really cool series. I can't wait to see more information come out from it.